We welcome all of you tonight in the name of Christ to have come to consider the coming of the Lord. <clears throat> we welcome those of you who have joined us in live stream also. We're very grateful we live in a time when space can be bridged yes. by technology and we can have fellowship with one another even though we're far apart. This can be seen anywhere in the world yes. that a person has the has the means. This will be the twenty seventh message on the coming of the Lord. His brother Judah has ably introduced readiness. Readiness readiness for his coming. The coming of Christ is referred to a number of different ways in Scripture. One, one place is called the second time. <clears throat> it's a second time on earth. He appeared once in the end of the world to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He's presently appearing in the presence of God for us and the second time. He'll appear on the earth from another viewpoint, he'll be revealed from heaven. That's Second Thessalonians 1, 7. And the angels told the disciples, he's going to come in like manner as you have seen him. Mm -hmm. you, you actually have seen him go. You'll see him come. Amen. You'll see him. It's called the appearing. See, Jesus is right now. But he's hidden from view. Yeah, right. When he was on earth, he was hidden by a body. Mm -hmm. His body concealed who he was. No one on earth has ever yet seen him as he really is. His earthly ministry introduced him, but that uh, he was veiled. His own knew him not. There wasn't enough evidence to convince him. Let me rephrase it. There was enough evidence to convince them, but they wouldn't be convinced. <laughs> and from another viewpoint, the second coming of Christ, the period of Christ, is God showing him. The record God has given of his son, as John calls it, God testifies who the son is, where he is, what he's doing, what he's going to do, some people have believed that record, and some have not. But God's going to show it. He's exactly what God said he was. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the only potentate. <clears throat> I say he's the only potentate. I'm going to show him. It's also referred to as a, a return. His parable, Jesus spoke of a man who went to a far country and then he came, returned, yeah. uh -huh. came back. Jesus visited the earth. He's coming back. Amen. And he's said to come with the clouds. Mm -hmm. Revelation 1, 7. He went up in a cloud. He's going to come with the clouds. Yeah. Now note that none of these references are theoretical. I really want you to see that. None of them are based on like a supposition or our vague references. None of them, you don't get the idea, any of them God is theorizing with us or presenting us a possibility or an idea of what might be. He's setting forth, he's not setting forth something that is possible. This, this is associated with certainty Amen. Amen. or assuredness or certitude or confidence. You can live your life based on this. You can believe this and live in view of it, and it'll be a blessed time for you. Now, there's some things about God that this certainty 
reveals. See, men theorize. They see what could be, what ought to be, what might be. See, this is how men talk. Could be, could, could work out, might be, maybe, is possible. This isn't how God talks. He doesn't say, now you can be godly. You, 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 you can arrive at a point where <laughs> this isn't the way God talks. Jesus coming is undeniably associated with certainty. Now, there, there's this certainty reveals some things about God. One is that his fundamental intent is not life in this world. Yes, amen. Now, you've got to see this. Because when Jesus returns, the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise, and the elements melt with fervent heat. Mm -hmm. The earth also and the works of the end are going to be burned up. So this world isn't the main world. Yeah, amen. Yes. That's easy to say. But it is staggering to me how much religion is presented as though this world was the main world. Yeah. It's, it's not. We learn this about God. He has determined that every person, every offspring of Adam is going to see Jesus as he is. Yeah. He's determined that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. He announces it with the gospel, mm -hmm. tells them about it, but he has made this determination. This is about God. Mm -hmm. What Jesus has done has so impacted God yeah. He's not going to let anybody that's ever lived on this world fail to see who his son really is. Amen. He's made that determination. You can preach this, brother. You can tell people this. This also shows us about something about God, that God's great salvation hinges on Jesus' return. Yes. If Jesus isn't going to return, salvation is bogus. Yeah, right. It's just a delusion. That's all it is. But it's not a delusion. That's right. Amen. You neglect this salvation, whatever is required to get ready for this return, God, will, God has supplied it. Amen. God doesn't tell us the son's coming back and what's going to happen without also providing the means to prepare for it. You neglect this salvation, there isn't any escape. Amen. It's a rhetorical question, what it needs to be answered. How shall we escape if we neglect, if we neglect, if we neglect, not get, neglect, there's a lot of people that are saved that are neglecting it. Amen. God hasn't provided for any escape while you're in that condition. Right. There isn't any. That's why he's telling you that my son's coming back. God desires for men to be ready. That's what we know about God. God desires for men to be ready for Christ's return, so he's fully provided for that readiness. Now there's some things that this certainty of Christ's return reveals about salvation. Salvation is designed to prepare us for Christ's return. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know that it prepares us to live in this world, but that's a secondary matter. If you're ready for Christ's return, you've been living right. Yeah, that's right. This brings in the matter of stewardship. When everybody comes into the kingdom of God, they get something for which they are responsible. Yeah. Nobody has failed, failed to receive some of this distribution. Uh -huh. He distributes to every man yeah. what he wants him to have, and his job is to do something with that that will please God when Jesus comes again. And if it doesn't, they had no chance they can be saved. He just made that clear in his parables. 
So this salvation, this, the certainty of Christ's return reveals these things about salvation. Salvation requires an accent, capital letters, underlined, an accent on faith and hope. The accent isn't on doing something. Although there is something to be done. We're talking about an accent here. But the accent is on faith and hope. Yes. If what you do is not prompted by faith mm -hmm. and done out of hope, it's just a pointless activity uh -huh. as far as this salvation is concerned. Faith and hope, they lie behind the certainty of this salvation. by whom we also have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope. There it is, faith and hope, see. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. It should not surprise you that there are a lot of professing Christians that don't have hope. Yeah, that's right. I'm speaking now of those of whom it's not their own fault. They've been brought in by kind of a cheap gospel, like it, they weren't told the whole story, so they don't have hope. But if Jesus is coming again, faith and hope, <laughs> this is foundational. If your faith is as strong and your hope's not strong, drop everything else. Quit doing everything else and strengthen your faith and hope. You can't get ready for Christ's return by doing something. Because, see, if without faith and hope, you can't do enough. Galatians 5, 5 says, We, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness. Hey, we, we, we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. I understand that. By the obedience of one, many were made righteous. I understand that. But we're not thoroughly righteous. Yeah, uh -huh. this, this, this isn't righteous. That's right. Your body is not righteous. It's sanctified, but it's got to be kept in control. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> you got to control your body, keep under your body, and bring it into subjection. So we're waiting for the hope of righteousness means the full righteousness where well, there isn't going to be any spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Amen. And we're, uh, we're hoping for that. Yeah. To the Spirit, to the Spirit. Again, Colossians 1.23, if you continue in the faith, yeah, you'll be a part of this. If you continue in, if you continue, if you continue in the faith, Grounded, oh. settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which is preached to every creature under heaven, whereof I, Paul, have made a minister. I do not question that you know, maybe you are one, I hope not, that you do believe you had a legitimate start but you're not grounded and settled. All right, this has got to happen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Salvation is calculated to get you grounded and settled. Yes. So you're not moved by every wind of doctrine, by men who lie in wait to deceive. See? You won't be shifted by the winds of trial. You'll hold fast. I'm showing you this. Christ, the certainty of Christ's return, this is what it produces in, in salvation. Peter said, 1 Peter 1, 21, who by him do believe in God. What is this? What is this? Who's the him? Who by him yeah. believe in God? That's Jesus. Amen. You couldn't even believe in God right. if it wasn't for Jesus. And what about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? They were before. Uh -huh. They needed Christ, yeah. and when Christ came, he covered, yeah. <laughs> he covered their Amen. situation. By him to believe in God, 
who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Now the devil will try and trick you up here, trip you up. He gets you to place your confidence in something else. Maybe your job, maybe your education, maybe your family, maybe where you live, maybe your church. Get you to place it somewhere else. But see, if Jesus is in fact coming again, you cannot afford to have placed your eggs in the wrong basket. Amen. Amen. You cannot afford to have been wrong in your assessment of what the main thing is. Yes. You've got to be right. Amen. And thank God Jesus, and through the Holy Spirit, has in tutored us in this, so you're not, you don't have to guess it. Amen. Guess at this. Now, what is uh, what is certain? Demands readiness. Okay, usually everybody, I'm sure, can see that. But what is certain demands readiness. If it's coming, there's not a question about is it going to happen. If it's certain, then readiness is mandatory. Now God has taught us that what He says is certain. All through Scripture, He's left these testimonies. In the Garden of Eden, he said, Now, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. In the day you eat of it, thou shalt surely die. That came to pass. That's telling you now, whatever God says comes to pass. God, in the days of Noah, got fed up. Violence covered the face of the earth. The thoughts of the imagination of man's heart was only evil continually. God found Noah, and he told Noah what he was going to do. I'm going to destroy all flesh. Not only human flesh, animal flesh, I'm going to destroy it all. And it came to pass. It's just like he, just like he said, the self-same day Noah entered the ark, the rain started. And one year later, almost to the day, he walked out of that ark, yeah. and what God had said came to pass. Amen. See, God's, God's teaching us in these yeah. events here. One day he, no, Abraham was a man who was impotent from the beginning, evidently. Then he got old, and he couldn't bring forth children. His wife, Sarah, was barren from the start of their marriage. She couldn't have children, and God appeared to him. He said, about this time next year, Sarah will have a son. And about that time next year, Sarah had a son. What's that proving? What God says, he brings to pass. That's what, that's what it's teaching us. God appeared to Abraham. He made a covenant with Abraham. He told Abraham, now your offspring are going to go, they're going to go down into a strange country. They'll be afflicted there for 400 years. And they're going to come out after that with great substance. 400 years later to the day after they've been afflicted 400 years to the day. In fact, the scripture says, in Exodus 12, the self same day they came out with great substance. What was God showing? What I say comes to pass. I said you're going to come out with great substance, and you came out with great substance. And it wasn't even a dog that barked, and not a hoof was left behind. What's God saying? What I say. I do. Now God has spoken with unparalleled clarity and frequency about Christ's coming. It is as certain as death and the judgment. He is coming. We don't have a schedule of when it ends. There are at least 250 verses in the scriptures 
that deal directly with Christ's coming. Some of them are direct statements, I come quickly. Some are parables, kingdom of God is likened to. Some is doctrine, he shall come in the day, in the day the, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, the element melt fervent heat, that's doctrine. So he's spoken about it clearly, directly said it, the parables that illustrated it, there's doctrine concerning it, he will judge the world in righteousness, so forth. When you think about the coming of Christ, God the Father and the angels uh, are associated with it. Talk about something certain. When Jesus comes again, he said, uh, The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Yeah. Well, that's something. That's Jesus is coming. The Father is connected with that coming. Yeah. The angels connected with all the holy angels. Yeah. All the holy angels are connected with that. One gospel he'll, says he'll come in the glory of his Father and the glory of the angels. Mm -hmm. Another says he'll come in his own glory. So everything that Jesus is yeah. will be visibilized. Amen. If I can coin a word. Yeah. Yeah. Who God is will be yes. seen. Mm -hmm. Be no questions about it. Who the angels are, they've been taking care of us and are this very night. You'll be seen. See, something that much glory, you, you, you can depend on this happening. Yes. If God said, my son's going to come in all of his glory, and he's going to come in my glory, and he's going to come in all the glory of the holy angels, that certitude, yes. that certitude. He's told us that when Jesus comes, the day of the Lord, the world's going to end. He's going to go up in fire. He's reserved the world now is under fire against that great day. When Jesus appears, the heavens and the earth will pass away with a great noise. Not going to be secret. With a great noise, I guess it would be probably something like an unfathomable roar. Go pass away with a great noise. The elements, the things that made up the heavens and the earth are going to melt with fervent heat. Amen. The earth also and the works therein as everything man's done is going to be burned up. That's going to happen when Jesus comes again. Amen. See, you can't talk like that if the coming is not certain. The fact that this is a certain coming, that's why he can talk this way. This world is not going to last. Yeah. It looks now, it's been here for 6,000 odd years. And it looks like it's going to be here forever, but it's not. God's told us it's not. And when he, he's demonstrated in Scripture, when he says something, you can build your life around what he said. It's going to come to pass. God doesn't speculate, theorize, exaggerate, minimize. These, he doesn't do this. This is what man does, not him. And at the last trump, the dead are going to be raised. See, the return of the Lord is tied to something that's inevitable, yeah. the resurrection of the dead. Yeah. All that are in the grave, Jesus said, shall hear the voice of the Son of Man and come forth. Yeah. Some to the resurrection of life, some to the resurrection of damnation. Mm. One resurrection, yeah. two different kinds right. of people. Yeah, Jesus isn't going to shout the dead out twice. Mm -hmm. Or not some people think he is now. Ain't they first the first first gonna come and raise the righteous dead? They'll suddenly disappear. Then he'll uh, and he won't be visibilized, and he'll he'll come again. That'd be the third coming. And he'll come again and uh, set up his throne in Jerusalem, you know, and you there ain't gonna be any Jerusalem after Jesus That's comes right. again. Not on earth, not the earthly Jerusalem. Uh -huh. The new Jerusalem is going to come down from God out of heaven. Amen. John saw it. You know what it was? It was the glorified church. Yeah. It wasn't where the church is going to live. Uh -huh. It was where God's going to live. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and the day of judgment. Now judge nothing before the time. Don't make any final mm -hmm. decisions on the destinies of yes. Joe and Frank and Mary and Sue. Yeah. 
judge nothing before the time till the Lord come, who shall give to every man according as his work shall be. Then, we can say only then too, then shall every man have praise from God. So if you want someone to brag on you, let it be Jesus. Amen. He'll do it nice. Now what do you think giving praise from him is? Before an assembled universe, he'll say, this is my faithful servant. God's been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many. See, you couldn't talk like that if the summing of the Lord wasn't certain. Certainty of his coming. Now let's look for a moment at, at the concept of readiness, what it means to be ready. Of course, if you look at it academically, uh, it means prepared or to be ready for or poised to or immediately available for blessing. Willingly disposed, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. See, all that's involved in readiness. It won't, the coming of the Lord will not take us by surprise. Yeah, that's right. Even though we don't know when it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Because he's adapted you <laughs> yes. to the glorified Christ. Mm -hmm. You've been made a partaker of Christ's glory. So when his glory appears, you already been transformed from one stage of glory to the other. You're ready to look right at it. Amen. Yeah. That's the way it's going to be. Ready and poised. <coughs> the exhortation, and God speaks about this. I'm the first to tell you that there's not a lot about this being said today. I, I regret. I think a lot of people don't say it because they just they just don't know. If we live in a, re, a religious culture, a Christian culture where the second coming of Christ is not all that important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I hate to say that, but that's, somebody's got to say it, so I guess it just will be me. It's really not all that important. There's other things that are considered more important. Mm -hmm. What's the outcome of that? People aren't ready. Yeah. They're not ready. Here's the words of the Son of God himself, Matthew 24, 44. Therefore, be ye also ready. Yeah. Be ready, for in an hour that you think not the Son of Man comes. Be ready. Don't let it catch you unawares. One time he said if a man knew a thief was coming, he'd, he'd be ready so he wouldn't plunder his house. Because when Jesus comes, he's going to plunder everybody's house. He's going to take everything away from everybody that pertain to this world. It's all going to be gone. And a person who has a trust in Jesus will be standing naked before God with nothing at all. Be ready. This is illustrated in the ministry of John the Baptist. When God sent Jesus the first time, once in the end of the world, as Hebrews 9.26 says, once in the end of the world he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. But God had to get the world ready. For the first appearing, when he first appeared. Mm -hmm. That's right. And he sent John the Baptist to get people ready. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here's what the Lord says about him. He, John the Baptist, shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That's what God told John the Baptist's father. And Jesus, John did. He made people ready for Jesus right. by telling them to repent. Mm -hmm. How do you get ready for Jesus? Repent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Repent. That's how you get ready. Repent. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus appeared, people took John the Baptist seriously. They are ready to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. huh? So what he said to James to Peter and Andrew and James and John, follow me. They, up, they followed him right there, left their nets and followed him. He had a fishing business. Mm -hmm. Told Matthew, sit in the seat of customs, follow me. He got up and followed him. Yes. Why? He was ready. Yeah, amen. He amen. was ready. Mm -hmm. That's why John the Baptist made people ready. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
All the people come out to hear John the Baptist. They come from every quadrant of the area, flocked out to hear. They'd nobody in the history of the world had ever heard a man like John the Baptist. No one had ever heard a preacher like this. Nobody, nobody had ever heard a preacher like this. He came in the spirit and power of God. He wasn't even raised among people. He is raised up out in the wilderness. He grew up out in the wilderness, isolated. He was anointed with a spirit of power. When he came out and called out to repent, his voice must have thundered like a crack from heaven. And it pierced Spen's soul, so they were ready when Jesus came. See? Just the same today, you got people had to be ready to hear about Jesus. Had to be ready. You just don't go out and talk about Jesus to just anybody. You should have enough wisdom to detect also when they're ready. When they're ready. When Paul preached at Athens, he didn't say boo or ba about Jesus. He just said, oh, God's ordained a day to judge the world by that man. He did the original. They weren't ready. They weren't ready. Ready to receive readiness for the second coming assumes that you got ready for his first, so that you are you were made ready to receive what Jesus came to give. Forgiveness of sins. You gotta be ready to receive that. When Jesus comes again, you got to be ready ready to receive it. Here's a declaration of the, remember those ten virgins? Mm -hmm. They were all virgins. Yes. Huh? Yep. They were all virgins. Yes. They all had lamps. All their lamps were burning. But as the bridegroom tarried, the oil in the lamps wasn't enough. Yes. And the five foolish virgins underestimated yeah. the coming of the Lord. Yeah. They assumed it was going to be more immediate. And when he came, they didn't have any oil. And they asked the wise virgins, sell us. They're willing to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, they said, this is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We can't share our oil now. Before the king came, we could have been shared, we could have shared our oil. I'll tell you now that when the hour comes, when Jesus is come returns, the picture I get there's going to be like a gap of time. Probably it, it'll be quick, I understand, but it'll be cognitive to everybody. This is it. Yeah. And it's going to be too late yes. to prepare. He said, you'll see him yes. coming. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I tell you, that put the fear of God in you. Amen. That'll put the fear of God in you if you believe that. Yes. That's the way God is. Yes. He told mm -hmm. Jonah, uh, Noah told the people a flood, mm -hmm. flood sky, I assume he did. Actually, the scripture doesn't say that. Yeah. But a flood was coming. But people, they just... They were marrying, giving in marriage, living like they always lived till the day the flood came. Now, it, the waters weren't suddenly over the top of the mountains. This took a period of about 150 days before it all finally reaches apex. But during that 150 days, nobody could get ready. There are people scampering for the mountains, climbing up to the highest mountain, becoming innovative. Maybe some people made boats or something, I don't know. But they couldn't get ready. There's going to come a time before Jesus comes. We're not, I'm not talking about a lengthy period of, his, of history. I'm talking about an awareness. This is it. The summer's gone. The harvest is past. And I'm not saved. It's going to happen. Amen. Yes. But he tells us ahead of time, see? So there's no... There's no right. I don't know how God's going to treat people that say they are representing God who have not apprised people of this day. 
but I sure don't want to be among that number. Amen. It's not going to go well for people that didn't accent this certainty of Christ's return mm -hmm. and admonish and plead and strive with people to yeah. get ready. Amen. We've not got time for you to learn a new habit. No. Uh -huh. That's right. We've not got time for that. Mm -hmm. Get ready. Yes. You say, how can I do it? God will give you, once you make up your mind to get ready, uh -huh. God has grace for it to happen yes. rather swiftly. <laughs> Thank God for that. Be prepared for the resurrection of the dead. Now, a lot of our friends and family members have passed on. I've had three of my immediate family passed on. My mother and father passed on. They're going to be raised from the dead. Everybody who's been buried be raised from the dead. Some people be alive and remain, as Paul said, be alive and remain, so they'll get new bodies just on their, on their foot, so to speak. <laughs> just happen suddenly. Be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. We shall be changed. Now you gotta be ready for that change. We're gonna this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. Your house, which is from heaven, 2 Peter 5, 5, your house, which is from heaven, is an immortal body. Yeah. It can't die. Yeah. And everybody's going to get one, whether they're saved or lost. Right. Everybody's going to get one. The difference is going to be the folk that are ready will have cultured their spirits to fit in that yes. new body. Now, if you think folk are uncomfortable today, and there are folk that are uncomfortable going to church, like there's some woo, it makes them kind of ill at ease. Can you imagine having an unregenerate soul and living in an immortal body? That not one single thing you want to do will you be able to do. Yeah. For the saved, everything they wanted, they'll have. Mm -hmm. Amen. Will you fit in? That new body, when death is obviated yeah. and rendered obsolete, will you be ready? Yeah. See? How you get ready? Purify your souls. Yeah. Purify your hearts, you double-minded, yeah. James said. That's, right. that's why that's so serious, see? Because people unwittingly, they're living as though they're always going to live. Uh -huh. And you aren't always going to live. Be ready for the resurrection of the dead. Be ready to give an account. Mm -hmm. Give an account for your stewardship. In one of his parables, Jesus said, after the master had dispensed his goods and came back, he said he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account. Yeah. Give an account of your stewardship. I gave you these goods. I dispensed them to you from my warehouse. And I told you to be faithful and handle these things. And now give an account of your stewardship. How did you handle it? I gave you a, a good mind. I gave you an exceptional mind. You were able to think and think things out and I gave you that kind of mind. Why didn't you search me out? Yeah. Why didn't you use your mind to find out what I expected from you? Yeah. I gave you this ability. Play on that harp. Why didn't you play that harp for me? Why did you play it for the world? You have to give an account now for the yeah. stewardship. I gave you more money than most people have. You had more than enough. Now, now give an account. What did you do? Did you build new storehouses? Yeah. What did you do? See, everyone's got something. Yeah. I made you in the body of Christ. I made you, I, I gave you a spiritual gift mm. that was deeded in my body. Yes. Now, how did you handle that? Did you meet with my people? and use that ability 
I gave you a word of wisdom. I gave you a word of knowledge. Did you pass it along? Huh? I gave you the ability to lead people. Did you be a godly manager of souls? Did, what did you do with that? Did you give that to the business world or did you give it to me? Do you give an account? Amen. We're talking about readiness here now. See, readiness. Give an account. Be prepared to give an account of yourself. Every man should give an account of himself. Romans 14, 12 says, Every man should give an account of himself. Nobody's going to be there to help you. Mama's not going to be there. Daddy's not going to be there. The employer's not going to be there. Every man's going to give an account of himself to God, and you'll remember everything about you. You won't have, you won't be standing there in bodies like this. Yeah, you will have a complete command of your memory. There'll be nothing about you that you don't remember. That's right. And if you've been an unfaithful member, and suddenly there's a flood of morose memories that flood into your mind, you will realize I'm not ready. You wonder why people call for the rocks and mountains to fall on them, hide them from the wrath of the Lamb. That's why they weren't. They weren't ready. But let's say you are ready. Let's say you are. You have invested what God has given you. You've increased it. You've used it. Other people have profited from what God gave you. Now Jesus comes, and you kind of want to be the first one at the judgment. Let me come first, Lord. Let me. Now I help have to say no. I'll call your name when I'm ready for you. But you'll be anxious. Amen. You know I found. That let me just take a moment and testify. I have found that Jesus is everything he said he was. Amen. Yes. That he is a very present help in a time of trouble. That he can live in you and express himself in you. Yep. I've found that out. I've learned that. And I'll be glad to give an account if I continue in this way. See, as you continue in the faith, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, the Lord continues with you. See, angels are ministering to you. The Father is hearing your prayers. You're doing everything you can to get ready, but that's not that's just a small part, really, of the, <laughs> of the readiness process. It's God that's working in you to will and do of his own good pleasure. But you'll be ready when Jesus comes. Does it? Christ's coming doesn't have to scare you. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I know that there, for most of us, there is a time that it, it does come. It is kind of frightening to consider. But the longer you walk with the Lord, like the two on the road to Emmaus, things get clearer to you. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon you're looking forward. Yes, amen. You're saying no one else really sees what I am. When the Lord comes, then you'll be looking forward to it. And be prepared to reign and be with the Lord forever. Now, for some people, that is a whoa, that's a kind of a dreadful thought. Be with the Lord forever? Be, I mean, I know I'm there, I'm right, whoa. I'm not used to being any place with the Lord more than, say, an hour. I never really spent an extended period of time with the Lord. I... I don't know what it's like to wrestle through the night hours with the Lord or to have the Lord unfold his ways to me and give me a song in the night. I don't know why I never had that experience. Well, you better seek it. Amen. Because it'll, if you have it here, it'll make you bold there, yeah. bold then. Be prepared to ever be with the Lord. And be prepared to judge the world and angels. <laughs> no, you're not. Don't you know this, Paul? Don't you, don't you know this, that the saints are going to judge the world? Yeah. Shouldn't you be able to figure out some of the things in the earth while you're here? If you're going to judge the world, how are you going to judge the world when you have trouble with these piddly little problems? Yeah. Yeah. Can't figure out what to do. 
learn to figure out what to do, develop good judgment. Amen. You're going to judge the world. Don't let it be the first time you've made some delineating judgment. Mm -hmm. Don't let that be the because you won't you won't pass. Yeah. Uh -huh. Learn to distinguish good and evil now. Learn to tell when you should speak and when you should be silent now. Learn when to put your hand to something, when to take it away. Learn it now. Learn it now. Because you're going to judge the world. And angels, be ready. And all you're doing, as Jesus said, make sure you're not caught unawares. Amen. Make sure... Now, none of us can do this for you. I, I got all I can do is just my work on myself. So I can't do this for anybody else. If I could, I, w I would. If the Lord had given me the power to get someone else ready, I'd, I'd do that. But that's not the way salvation works. We tell them to be ready. Get ready. Don't be caught unawares. Don't let that coming surprise you. Like the fiery fire and sulfur that fell out of heaven on Sodom, it took them by surprise. They were eating and drinking and marrying and marrying and giving in marriage and going here and there. And suddenly, God interrupted their life. Now, brethren, I once contemplated. If I had one thing I could request from God, what would it be? And I, I decided this some decades ago, but I still feel this way. My compelling desire would be that God would enable me to convince people of the reality of Christ and his return. Because yes. I know. Yeah. I know. Once they're convinced of this, that just solves a lot of other problems. Yes. Amen. So I'll labor with that mm -hmm. to do that at this present time. I'll tell you what Jesus said. Take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves now. That's the biggest thing on your agenda now is yourself. You are not responsible for the rest of the world. That's right. yep. You're responsible first for yourself and then to whoever God sends you to, uh -huh. Uh -huh. whoever God puts in your path. Uh -huh. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness, and the cares of this life. See, the cares of this, the concerns of this life can overwhelm you. Some of you that are younger in the Lord, you, you know what I'm talking about here. Life can get overwhelming to you. It's just like a like wave after wave coming upon you. But you want to target not being that way. Salvation will, will help you to improve in that. So you'll be able to stand against waves. Don't be carried away with surfeiting. It's indulgences, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. What's the answer? Take heed to yourselves. And when you do, stand in the light of the Son of God and evaluate yourself in that light. See how you shape up after you hear what Jesus has had to say about life and so forth for yourself now, for yourself. Examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. And if you find a, if you are, you'll be ready. Yeah. You'll be ready when Jesus comes. Amen. That's my, that's my prayer for all of you, brethren. Amen. You can't uh, spend as much time with people as I've spent with you and not have this uh, compelling desire for you to be ready. Sometimes I, I see people, young and older, I see them there, they've kind of been on a bypass. But it's not the kind of thing you can dictate to us. It's just, it's not that. 
you got to kind of pray and seek for wisdom to direct them. But I see that. And when I was growing up, pe people saw that in me. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was, uh, oh, boy. I'd lived a full sinful life by the time I was 15. I had done things nobody can imagine, but I wasn't ready. I was raised in a good Christian home. So you see, I, de I desire that. But more than my desire, more than my desire for this, this is what Jesus desires. Amen. Be ye also ready. Brother, Brother Jonathan has our word of exhortation.